Okay, Shalom Israel. I want to start off first and foremost by giving all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh for giving me the idea or the spirit to do this lesson. All right, give me his Holy Spirit to do this lesson. I want to give double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect. And I want to entitle this lesson, Death is the only thing that keeps our people which when I say our people, I'm talking about you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So death is the only thing that keeps our people together, you Israelites. Okay? And it was inspired by watching this movie, Soul Food, which is a J classic. I'm pretty sure brother seen it. And for those of you that didn't see it, it says, uh, When Ahmad Simmons, diabetic grandmother, Josephine Big Mama Joseph, falls into a coma during an operation to amputate her leg, it throws the Joseph's family into chaos. Ahmad watches as his mother, Maxine, and Aunt Terry and Tracy struggle to adjust to the family matriarch's sudden absence, fall into old rivalries, share memories, and work to maintain the long-standing tradition of Sunday family dinners. Now, that's the reason why this is called soul food, because Jake's, you know, Jake normally get together. Like, that was a, a, a tradition Especially back in the, um, you know, back in our, I would say like, for example, my, um, my family, my grandmother, it was 11 of them. And if they were like, they all uh, basically passed on now, but I know, um, you know, when they were alive back when I was younger, like uh, when a lot of them was, uh, alive or a lot more of them were alive, um, they would, they would, uh, make it their duty to have, uh, you know. Uh, Saturday or Sunday barbecues, all right, in a family reunion every summer. And um, it was actually from who you would call Big Mama because my grandmother and uh, her, her uh, 10 brothers and sisters, it actually started with her mom. Her mom, like uh, my family would always talk about, like her mom would always get together. She would always bring the family together for Sunday dinner. All right, which is that's why it's known as soul food because soul food brings uh you know our people together, you know. So now you want to ask yourself, okay, what is soul food? All right, so quick synopsis of what is soul food. It says soul food is basic down home cooking with its roots in the rural south. Okay, so right off the bat, you can see that soul food started in the rural south. All right, which basically stems back to the slavery days. All right, and this is for the so-called blacks, but you could even, you know, um, you could even paint it for the so-called Hispanics and Native Americans, because the foods that we eat now that we call delicacies, best believe that's slave food, man. That's food that our people had to come up with in order to survive in slavery. The staples of soul food cooking are beans, greens, cornmeal. Used in cornbread, hush puppies, and Johnny cakes, and as a coating for fried fish. All right, and in that movie, uh, Soul Food, you sh it showed you that perfectly, man. Soul Food was um, their Soul Food was a uh, uh, um, greens, like I said, greens, beans, fried catfish, you know, which you could substitute that for fried, uh, you know, just fried fish in general, in general. All right, and pork. All right, so it says in pork. Pork has an almost limitless number and uses in soul food. Okay. So now in a hey, when you <laughs> like the brother um Kalab in the camp, he always goes into um how Big Mama, you know, our people uh live and thrive off of Big Mama's wisdom. But well, Big Mama, what? She ended up getting her leg amputated. Because all the bullshit she was eating, man. And all the bullshit she pushed on the family to eat, man. You know? So another thing that, you know, is rapid because of these Sunday soul food dinners. There's really nothing but fattening foods. Alright? Slave foods, if you will. It's diabetes. Which leads to what? Leg amputation. Alright? So again, as I say, the only thing that keeps our family together is death. Alright? Other than soul food, you know, because now it's kind of different. Which I'm pretty sure brothers is the same with a lot of brothers. It's different um, in my family now because um, my grandmother and all her siblings, basically, it's only my grandmother and her sister. 
the other uh, eight passed away. You know, so it's really basically the family's divided. One talking shit against the other, you know, but the immediate clicks like um, my dad and his siblings. The only time they really get together is when um, on Thanksgiving, which is bullshit. You know, they got the soul food there or just on a regular Saturday. You know, they come together to eat some crabs, shrimps and clams and uh, all types of abominations, man. You know, or the whole family might get together, but really it's only for a funeral. And, you know, in, in, in times of the funeral, they'll say, well, you know, we got to get together more. You know, I miss you. That's that's really the, that's, the funeral is the new family reunion, man. You know, and that's that's basically it, it, it is what it is, man. You know, we under the curses and this proves who the Israelites are today. This this proves, you know, really who the Israelites are today, man. You know, by the foods they eat. All right. By the, uh, the neighborhoods we're forced to live in, by how they treat each other. You know. That's why, hey, this is an Israelite classic, man. You know, was this where a lot of, um, well, I can't, I don't know. I'm not even going to sit there and say that. But this is an Israelite classic. Now, when you go into the laws, right? All right, it says, God says, don't eat these foods. Leviticus 11 chapter. And, as you know, as a description of soul food just went. All right. You got all the abominations or all this is what Jake eats. This is what Jake calls a delicacy. Here it is, Jake could not be having no money, you know, because this shit is expensive, man. Uh, seafood is expensive. You know? You got clams, king crab legs, pork. Alright, and as I said, man, it's the same thing with northern tribes, man. Northern Northern don't get together. Um, but to the same thing, man. It's always some pork in the mix, man. For Christmas. All right, which is wicked in itself. You know, Northern always got to have a roasted pig, man. You know, again, this is what God says to eat under the law. Clean, all right, you see the top and unclean foods, man. You know, some Jake down south, they still eat. They eat snake, you know, they eat, uh, you know, rabbit and all types of pork, of course. Snail, that's a delicacy for them, man. You know, again. And as we always go into these, these basically is basically in the roach family, man. All right, which hey, these crabs, the crabs and the roach look the same. Look the same, man. You know, it's almost like looking in the mirror for for a crab, man. All right, top left corner. That's that's northern right there, man. You know, that's northern, man. They all love shrimp. That's hey, all Jake loved chicken, which chicken is lawful. All right, pork. And shrimp, okay? That's a jig delicacy, man. You know? And this, hey, this world is basically, this world is upside down, man. Because when you go, in, even when you go into the, um, which I'm going to just grab an um, example. Even when you go into the law, all right? The Lord, that's why he told us to keep these holy days, man. That's really... We came together for life in the ancient world, man. We came together for a celebration of the Lord delivering us from our captivities. That's what the holy days are for. That's what the, you know, you got the memorial blowing the trumpets. All right. Uh, um, the feast of dedication. All right. The Purim. All right. These were our holy days. This is what we came, we came together. All right. Uh, um, in the celebration of, of life, really. You know, to as nowadays, Jake come together in a celebration of death. All right, and that's what happens when you under the uh the devil, the wicked. All right, this is Exodus twelve and twenty three, for Yahweh will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel, and on the two side posts, Yahweh will pass over the door and will not suffer to destroy you, to des the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you, because this is uh Moses. Basically giving instruction to Israel, you know, to put the um the blood of the um I wanna yeah, the blood of lamb, okay. This is uh dipping in the blood that is in the basin. Alright, on their on the dirt pools, so that way when the Lord comes through and smite Egypt, they can be safe. Alright, put it on their door posts and, and, and their houses. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and, and to thy sons forever. <clears throat> I 
And it shall come to pass when ye come to the land which Yahweh will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. Okay, and this is an account for um, the Passover, which as, as as we just read, we're supposed to keep that forever. But really, that's for, um, you know, all the um, all the holy days, man. As a matter of fact, it says in Deuteronomy 16 and 16, three times in a year shall all thy males appear before Yahweh, thy power in the place which he shall choose in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which we just read was the Passover in the Feast of Weeks. All right, the Feast of Weeks is the um, the 50 days after the Passover. And in the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Weeks, I believe, another word is the, the, the Pentecost. And in the Feast of Tabernacles, same thing, man. The Feast of Tabernacles, basically when we, um, um, the Feast of Tabernacles or the, uh, Feast of, let me see, it's lucky. Feast of Tabernacles. I want to make sure I'm not going off here. All right, so this is uh, the Feast of Tabernacles in Leviticus 23 and 34. Speaking to the children of Israel, the 15th day of this seventh month, Shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days until Yahweh. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. Ye shall do no sort of our work therein. You know, and and um, you know, we try to the best of our ability to keep these holy days, but you know, brothers gotta work, and you know, brothers don't really have bread like that all the time. You know what I'm saying? It's really not. Um, we really can't celebrate it uh to the T in this society, man. So that's why we say we say by the faith. You know, even though, as I said, you know, we we rehearsing the righteous acts. <coughs> and we try to the best of our ability. But it says, seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be in holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. It is a solemn assembly. And ye shall do no sort of our work therein. These are the feasts of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be in holy convocations. To offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon this day. Beside the Sabbaths of Yahweh, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offering, offerings, would ye, would ye give unto Yahweh. Also on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep the feast of the Lord. Let me see. Seven days on the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And you shall take, um, I'm trying to skip straight to the points, lock it. You should keep it a feast. Skip to 41. And ye shall keep it a feast until Yahweh seven days in a year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt I am Yahweh your power all right and when you go on like I said you go into the history of all our holy days you know the Purim was in the time of Esther when the Lord saved us out of the uh the you know the the, the wicked decree that uh Haman uh put out basically he put a hit out on all Israel man you know, the Feast of Tabernacles, basically when our, um, our forefathers, the Maccabees, I mean, not the Salaki, not the Feast of Tabernacles, the um, the uh, um, 
feast of dedication. When our forefathers dedicated, um, and they, they actually took back, you know, um, the um, the Holy Land. All right, the sanctuary, the Holy Land, the sanctuary where basically the Lord had our priests, uh, you know, do sacrifices unto the Lord. They took that back, you know. So we got together. It was for a celebration. All right, of the Lord basically reviving us of life, man. Whereas today, our people get together, for, like I said, for Thanksgiving, all right? Or well, as some of can say, thanks killing, all right? Well, uh, uh, basically, our people celebrate Esau taking us now. Our people celebrate the death of each other, man, you know? Which this day, this place is upside down, man. You know, like you may watch that that show, um, um, man, what's that show? Um, I can't remember off top on Netflix, uh. Yeah, man, but this is the upside-down world, man. How people celebrate Christmas, same shit. You know? How people celebrate wickedness, they celebrate death. All right? Whereas we're really supposed to be getting together to celebrate life. Hey, even right now, man, with the spiritual brothers get together, all right? And we really, we represent Israel, man. You know, brothers get together to do lessons, and, you know, we get together to, you know what I'm saying, probably, you know, get, uh, yeah, do lessons. Brothers get together to work out. You know what I'm saying? Brothers get together to camp. We get together for life. Uh, 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 you know, beautiful purposes, man. You know? So that was it, man. That's really all I had. You know, Lord willing, you all can edify. Um, hey, and that's why we need uh, Yahweh Shai, man. You know, that's why we need Yahweh Shai to come back and set everything right, man. All right? Because our people is messed up. You know? Hey, man. So with that, Shalom to the elect.